Okay. Beautiful people, what is up? Welcome back. Episode 105, Sunday Sessions with Rich Podcast. If you are new to my show, welcome. Okay, episodes drop every Sunday. On today's episode, guys, Ariel stops by for a chat. Ariel is the owner of the Hill and Hand Skin Care, which is a plant-based, 100% natural and handmade with tons of love and affirmations. And if you, that affirmations part is, is fucking key. She also runs a daycare service called Just Like Home Learning Center. Uh, Ariel has also released her first ever book. And correct me if I'm wrong, if this is not your first ever book, but it's called Poetry Saved My Life. And I'm going to provide all the links below. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm oh. so excited to be here. Something new for me to even go out here and talk. Hey. Do this type of stuff. So I, I'm trying to, you know, grow out of my comfort zone. So I need this too. Hey, you, you, you doing well. I was, we was chopping it up before um, I hit record though. We had recorded an episode before, but it didn't save. And I was saying that whenever episodes don't save, it just meant that wasn't the message for the time. So I'm grateful that mm -hmm. I'm grateful we was able to uh, get this going. But I gave you a mini red carpet, but I want you to have the full floor. For those who don't know about you, let us know who you are and what you got going on. Okay. Yeah. Let me get water real quick. Get your water. Get your water. I know you got a lot. You many hats. Yes. So I think my whole mission is just to help people. So this is why I work in childcare. Um, I always wanted to be the person I needed as a child. So I have a yeah. daycare. Healing hands was just something I was working on because I have my own skin issues and stuff like that. So healing hands was just like a little hobby for myself. And when the pandemic started, people was like, you just start selling your product. So that's how that came yeah. about. Um, poetry saved my life. So I've been writing. Yo. I've been writing since 2017. I always knew I was going to have a book. Or we got to tap. We got to tap into that too, because I am because I'm a poet too. So we got to tap into that. We'll continue. Continue. I started writing with my therapy. That's Same. Why poetry saved my life, and it was never. I didn't feel like a poet at first. It was just like I was just journaling. Yeah. And then and I was reading it, and it was like that's a poem. That. <laughs> oh. It just it just went from there. So my whole I think like I said, my whole thing is healing. So that's why my social media name is Ari the Healer. Mm -hmm. That you know, Twitter, Instagram. So I'm gonna I'm drop the links. Don't worry. The all, all her handles will be below this episode. Don't tweet. Oh, and I love astrology. I'm into astrology, all of that. I do it all. <laughs> you do it all. A jack of all trades. So talk to me. Now, you can't just glide over it like you don't do stuff that's important because I, I, need, I need you to talk your shit. Because first of all, you have a learning center, which is fucking awesome. I've seen like the clips you post and like how detailed and hands on. I'm giving your flowers. Yeah. I'm giving your kudos because this is the first time I'm able to do it in person. So you're doing some amazing shit. You are impacting a lot of kids' lives. And I know just a, the being that you are. They 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 in great hands. So I'm giving you your flowers. Good fucking shit. And having your own Thank skincare you. business. Good fucking shit. That's not no small task. And you a fucking author. You an author. <laughs> so published. Like when that so let me <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, what? I was just, listen, I was just playing with it. I was just like, how am I about to publish this book? I'm like, I don't wanna. Um, I wanted to do hard copies, but I'm like, you know what? My money not right there for me to just do all of that right now. Cause it was, I was going through it. So I'm like, I'm going to self-publish it through Kindle. I was playing and it just uploaded. I'm like, boom, it came out. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. So I'm going to have the, um, the link provided for her book as well, guys. Um, I want to talk to you about, well, let's dive into poetry first. Cause we, this, this is going to be a, a jam-packed episode. So you said you started writing in 2017. You said you was using it as a, a therapeutic release. I was the same. I started when I was in uh, eighth grade because I'm going through the typical young teenage shit, find this way, don't not express his emotions. I'm a man. People, you know. And it's funny, too. Um, little side, side rant. I remember as a child, 
whenever you express your feelings, they call you weak and they'll be like, you know, don't, you know, why are you feeling that way? So I suppress my shit. I suppress wow, yeah. my shit. Because we're taught not to show our emotions, which is wild. It is. And going back to it, that's exactly why. Because I didn't feel like I had nobody to talk to. So uh, I'm like, all right, talk to myself, write it out. That's it. But I, we, I'm sorry, not to, go ahead. I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I cut you off. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, I was saying it's kind of funny. I just had this thought. You were talking to your higher self. You were mm-hmm. writing to your higher self, a letter to your higher self, a poem to your higher self. Mm-hmm. It was a childhood. I, I was thinking about my younger self too. Like a lot of my poems was about stuff from my childhood, stuff that I just had to get over. Yeah. Like, so it was like, it's really that people, like my me and my sister was talking about my book. She was like, I never knew you went through some of that stuff. I'm like, yeah. Never know, bro. Yeah, you never know. Never know. The reason why I feel like I am the way I am because you don't know what people are going through. So yeah. Especially with like they lash out. Like nine times out of ten, the person who was angry and angry at you, like a random person or whoever just lashing out, they hurt and they seeking help. They ask for help. But they don't know how to ask. So there's angry. That's crazy. So I just had a dream. Talk about it. Last night in my dream. I was at my cousin's house and I don't even know this person, but you know in your dream, if you see somebody clearly you saw them before. Yeah. Um, they were like, you mask your hurt with your anger. And that with the fact that you just said that and somebody in my dream telling me that, I'm like, wow. Hey, that's that was second message. <laughs> second message. Wait, what's your what's your sign? So I'm a Libra sun, cat moon, sag rising. I see. Okay, damn. I thought it was an Aries. You got any Aries in your chart? I don't have it in my chart. Like, I don't have any planets in Aries. I was picking, I was probably picking up on that Sagittarius vibe because I felt the fire. I felt the fire from you. So I was, I was curious. I feel stallion too. So that's probably that Mars energy you feel too. Damn. Okay. So you said Libra, Libra Sun, Cat Moon, Sag Rising, but all my other placements are Scorpio. That's crazy. Okay. You got some Scorpio on your shit. I see you. I'm like, you talking? energy you picking up on <laughs> i was definitely picking that scorpio vibe that scorpio vibe so like going back to poetry i used to so wrote in eighth grade um found out that we had a poetry slam uh, team on high school so i applied my freshman year didn't get it basically i sucked it wasn't up to par because i was just writing like little shit to myself mm-hmm. but you learn it so I was like, you know, fuck that. I'm going to come back next year and I'm, I'm going to get this shit. So I just started practicing, um, just getting better and shit. Made the team sophomore year. So I did that all through high school. Um, and then college, I started a poetry little, little team. So we'll do it. We'll have like open mics once a month kind of thing. So like once a week, come in, write for like an hour or two, do little prompts and shit. And then we'll host a little shit. Um, and then I, I fell off. I fell off after high school to be in the high, high school after college, to be honest. Um, but I still, I, it's still so beautiful. And I think there's a message for me to get back into writing to like, I, express how I feel. Cause I'm like, I wish I had the guts to do stuff like that. I never did stuff like that. Like to go try out for the poetry slam and do stuff like that. So I'm like, the, the fact that you even did that, that's beautiful to me. So nerve wracking, like somebody hearing your shit, hearing your thoughts. No, for real. <laughs> but you vulnerable. And people can that's just like this this podcast. I'm vulnerable. I'll let y'all know the shit I go through. But then you helping somebody. It's it's beauty in, in being vulnerable. It really is. I'm learning. That's something that I had to learn. Like you said, like we grew up, we we thought we had to be tough. Like you have to be strong. Yeah. People that's why like people used to always look at me like as the strong one. So I feel like, all right, they people can't never see me be weak now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta keep I, that mask on. Exactly. And that's making you miserable. Deep down, it'll be moments where you realize it, but then you'll brush it up with positivity or like the why behind you. you gotta keep the mask on to keep it going. But that shit is still there. <laughs> oh, you know what? As I've been growing up, like literally like just elevating and like 
becoming my my authentic self. Yeah. A lot, a lot of things have been shedding. So I feel like masks have been shedding. I've been leaving my life. Like a lot of changes have happened in my life, and it may it's for the better. I feel like I I, I feel like I'm becoming my true self. Like with everything that's been going on, so I'll take it. So. <laughs> You definitely, definitely evolving as we as we go. It's, it's, this, this whole journey is, is 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 interesting. Um, how did you even get started? Speaking of journey, how did you even get started on your spiritual? Like, when did this whole like universe? I'm a creator. Um, I go about. I lost my grandfather to cancer. My condolences. And thank you. That was like literally one of my favorite people. And for me, so I, I more so got into the health side of it first. I went plant based, mm. and then I always was into like astrology and stuff. And it just happened. <laughs> um, I started, I started meeting people, like minded people, like me. I started to meet my soul tribe. Okay. I started understand life more seriously. I started meditating. I started like doing stuff for me and. Mm. I wanted to heal because I know like I cannot think of this book the book name but in this book it tells you why certain diseases happen like cancer is a disease of anger obesity please try to find the name of that book because that sounds interesting I, I think it's called like your body speaks to you I'm gonna I have to let you know I'm not at home right now I was at home but I'm, I will definitely I'm send it to you what's the way what yeah. was the title I think it's called Your Body Speaks to You. And it's interesting you say that because like when you when you feel um when you feel your emotions, like for example, if you feel upset about something, like if you feel anger, it's because a boundary has been crossed mm -hmm. on for your personal own boundary. So somebody didn't let's say somebody owe you money and they didn't pay you back kind of shit and you get angry about it boundary has been crossed right that's interesting how this like tells us that but go to, to, to go to go back to the story. oh no that was just a little stuff just about the book so when i was getting into that book um i just got into like i don't know i always felt like i have like very prophetic dreams like a lot of stuff happens but i just never thought anything of it until i realized like how powerful i truly am so that shit do be freaky though when you had dreams about certain stuff i had i've had a few i can remember vividly but that shit is it's not weird but it's it's, like it's a, just like well, i'm powerful yeah. <laughs> deja vu just little stuff and i'm just wait, like wait, pause pause what is your definition of deja vu I want to know everybody. I'm gonna start asking everybody this question. So I could. So I just let, for instance, yesterday I had a moment of deja vu. I wanted to go see my friend, and I remember dreaming about my friend going to see my friend, and mm. two nephews were outside. And yesterday, when I went there, his two nephews was outside playing, and he walked out top, literally just like in my dream. Damn. So what does that mean? So what does that mean for you? Like when this happens. So I never thought about, I never just thought about it. So I'm like, oh, this is deja vu. And I just move on with it. But me and Lex was actually having a conversation. She was like, whenever I have deja vu, that means something good is about to happen. So I'm mm -hmm. like, all right. After, after this deja vu moment. <laughs> That's interesting. We, too. Yeah. So I never thought about it. Something's good. Gonna happen. Because it's, it's, I can't, I can never grasp the concept of, of deja vu i feel like it's, it's something simple but we overthink it and it's pissing me off i just want to know the, i just want to know the answer that's the one mystery of life if i can know what deja vu means i'll be content i can die happy it, right i understand what you said i guess because now i'm thinking about it now <laughs> it's like okay so for example i had tripped on acid one time no not mo more than one time but i was having one one of many ego deaths i don't know that whole concept still i ain't with it but i was i know I was, I was shedding some things so maybe it was ego death but we still need our ego but a version right. of myself i no longer need it um and i was going 
I was depressed at the time and I want to, I want to kill myself and be completely honest with you. So I was tripping. I was in my grandma crib. I had tripped on like two or three tabs of acid. Uh, and I'm in her kitchen with a knife on my wrist. And I'm about to end my shit. And then my higher self talked to me. And he or she said, if you do this, you're just going to have to come back and play this again. So I say that to say, now it's fucking me with deja vu. Does that mean we are replaying that portion? There's something about that moment we're supposed to pay attention to. Wow. See? I, wow. Like, did we... Cause you know, people, I, people are in your life. Like people, most likely the, anybody For in your reason. life have been that's right. past life. So like when you're saying something like, yeah, it could be something like that. Cause like Lexi, for example, in your life, I'm pretty sure before this experience, y'all made a contract. We go link up. We go be the best of friends, blah, blah, blah. That was y'all role. But right. It's and it's because we didn't meet until I got, I started working in childcare. I started, me and her mm. met. And we worked together before we became friends. Wow. <laughs> so y'all said link up at the at the at the learning center. It is uh I just love breaking down because I, I look at life as a movie now. So I'm just like looking at these different scenes. Works out. Like just like me listening to I used to listen to your podcast every morning during the pandemic. Oh, bless you. Bless you. And for us to have this conversation two years later, it's beautiful. You still doing a podcast, still going strong. Like you give me in my feelings. It's Sunday morning. You're gonna have me in my feelings. That's what it is. It's the first of the month, too. It's gonna be a good month. I appreciate that. Thank you for um supporting me. And then whoever listening, thank you too. I don't know who listens to my show. Like I just want to know, like for you to tell me that you listen, that means a lot to me. I just wanna you don't know who listens. Like your show, your show helped me on my journey because around that time and during the pandemic. Um, that's when me and Lex both quit our jobs and we started the daycare. We started the daycare. We didn't get our first child until six months in. Wow. So, like it was just like stuff, stuff, everything happens for a reason. It's an alignment. Mm. Alignment. Mm. So I'm like, you ref, you're definitely doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're definitely living in your purpose. Like I appreciate this moment. God damn. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. God damn, you can have me in my feelings. 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, no, thank you for that, honestly. You mentioned that you took a leap of faith and quit your job. Mm -hmm. Walk me through that, because I feel like a lot of, like, with the, the pandemic, when we, it was a spirit, it, yeah, it pissed me off, but it was a higher perspective why it needed to happen to wake people up and just get people thinking. So mm -hmm. I say that to say, during the the when we was on house arrest, I called it house arrest because you was on house arrest. self house arrest. You could have left. I don't give a fuck. fuck that shit. Um, but during a period of house arrest, that <laughs> people was <laughs> uh, cracked myself up. Um, you had a lot of time to think and like reflect and figure out like this. What's what's more to life? You see what I'm saying? So what? There wasn't like a voice with you with like what it okay, I don't want to do this shit anymore. So this is what it was. Um I was the director at the last that I worked at. So mm -hmm. I was in a good place. I'm like move out, all of this stuff. Like, thank God I ever moved out because I probably would have stayed in my job because I would have had to pay rent. But I was just talking, me and Lex was talking, and it's crazy because I've been into human design. She's a um She's a projector. I'm a generator manifester. So, okay, you you throwing a lot at me, and it's great shit. I want to hear. So you, you got we got backtrack. We got track back. So I heard about human design. Well, so I saw somebody talk about it on Twitter, mm -hmm. and I heard about it again recently. Uh, now, when you said generator, that, that sounds familiar. You said Lexia, what? A projector. So, what's the whole concept of human design? So, for me. So what I, I've been, I've just been studying it too, and what I've been looking at it tells you how to respond to certain things in your life. Mm -hmm. So like, well, like, this is projector. So with her offers have to come to her. Mm -hmm. I'm a generator manifester. What I want, and still like I can start stuff up mm -hmm. too. Generator do. Okay. 
So I always, I always said I was going to have a daycare and I was like, you know what, Lex, we could do the daycare. We could do it in the house. We can, we could do this girl because we, she was in childcare. She, she had, she has two kids and she was like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my kids because one of them's in school. Who's going to be able to watch her because her, her so it's like let's just do the daycare and we took that leap of faith got our llc and we did it and during that I, like i said we didn't get our first child till six months in so it was like we was getting tested it was like is we are we supposed to be doing this but when we took that leap of faith i always knew like we were going to get to where we wanted to be and we still not where we want to be yet we're trying to get a building but i know what's going to happen it's, it's, a, it's a process and I how long like, you been doing this for so we well, having your own having your own daycare. Two years. God damn! Con- shit! Congrats on that. So technically, one and a half years since we to get our first child. So <laughs> six months in. Two but years. yeah, two years. Yeah, two years. And um, I just feel like our story. We gonna write a book about this daycare because it's Me it's too. our story with this. How how we did this is. It's beautiful and it, it makes me grateful for like us being held back because I feel like if we if we got it too fast, we would have never appreciated it. So exactly. that's just wild. So I feel like because it's like a common theme of surrendering, taking that leap of faith. Because it was sink or mm-hmm. swim. So the universe, okay. Universe, like I was just having this conversation this morning. The universe is like bet. You let go of the resistance. Now I can give you what you want. So we are literally in our own way That's of true. receiving what we want. Mm-hmm. Unless you quit that toxic job, more opportunities come in because you was holding on to that same vibration. So then you can't match the other one that you're looking for. That's very true. That's yeah. very. It's all vibration, all vibration. It's- it is. And like, you know, you know how they say, like, you are what you eat, you are what yeah. you eat. People don't like, know that shit. People don't know that shit. Like, that's, yeah. I'll be correcting people when they be saying shit. Like, I'm bro. I'm like, bro, you're not bro. Like, stop saying that. <laughs> stop saying that. Like, that's why, I, so when I found, and when I, well, I, I knew how powerful I was, but when I was just going through my human design, my own oh, manifesting general, this is why, like, I literally, every morning I journal, like, I journal, like, and when I journal, I manifest when I journal. Mm-hmm. It's so much sense, like, why things are happening the way they are happening now. Like, I get it. You I feel like. gripping your shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> like, I've noticed, too, like, when it comes to. Cause I don't even you. I don't like saying law of attraction. I don't like you saying, man. I just you, I create my reality. Just, you just you just create your life, you, real reality. And when people like, I feel like it's levels to understanding just how deep and far this shit goes when it comes to creating. Like some people think there's a limit to what you can do, like a surface level. Like no, I didn't attract this into my life. No, no, you did. Mm-hmm. you can unconsciously attract things mentally all and that's something that I had to learn because um I do when I have thoughts about like it, it was like I didn't trust people but I didn't trust myself that's why I trust other people mm. and attracting people who I couldn't trust in my life you can't you can't drop that powerful gem so smooth but no seriously so Damn. I didn't realize I was unconsciously doing that. Why couldn't you trust yourself? If, 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 if I can ask that question. I didn't realize I didn't trust myself until I had a conversation with um, one of my close friends. And we were just about like, well, I don't know. Like we were just talking about, I guess, like I fell out with all of my childhood friends. It was just a lot of stuff that was happening. And I'm like, I don't trust people. Like, I don't want to deal with people. I was at a point in my life where I, I was like, I don't need nobody in my life. I don't trust people. And it was like, you don't trust yourself because of something that happened. Yeah. I was holding on to that. And I was holding on just like stuff in relationships with guys. It's like, oh, I don't trust these, these, these dudes out here. Like they, but you know what? I didn't trust myself because I'm like, I picked you. I didn't trust my intuition when I saw the red flags. You know mm. what I'm saying? 
that's what it was like when I didn't trust myself. Mm. I didn't, I didn't trust my intuition. Damn. And then the momentum for that just kept carrying on until you was made aware again. Mm-hmm. Responsible for it. Yeah, you you really are. And when he had that conversation with me, when he said he was like, no, you don't trust yourself. That's why you have the wrong people in your life or you are attracting these type of people in your life. And when he told me that, I consciously tell myself every morning, I trust my intuition to lead me to my best life. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I consciously be aware of how I say and move because literally everything you do is magic. Still. We are ultimate magicians. Exactly. So once you, and once you learn that, that will help you shift your focus too. Because why would you want to attract the best? Yeah. It comes because perspective is big on with with me. Um, mm-hmm. and it saves you from spiraling down like the rabbit hole of mm-hmm. overthinking and victim thoughts and shit yeah because it's okay feelings yeah but that shit at some point you have to let stuff go (laughs) that's what it is like it's a reason it's a blessing to every lesson big fucking times yeah everything happens for a reason it's no coincidence in this shit oh question i'm I'm, 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 gonna make you think this episode okay what's your what's your um Take on free will and destiny. I feel like. Because we create our reality, right? You. But then, uh, go ahead. You do. Okay. So I feel like, I feel like it's both because you do have a destiny, but you have the free will to either do go to your destiny or you could back away and you're gonna have to like eventually it'll come you go that's gonna be a lesson you keep having to learn in the life i feel like i'm mm-hmm. like once you don't this lifetime what's your destiny or your fate this lifetime you're gonna get tried again in the next is that what deja vu come from yes there we go with deja vu no seriously just like the people that i meet or get into astrology oh i love it so you let's can get into it let's get into it past life people in your life like um so my south node is Taurus and so I noticed like me and Taurus people we used like I used to get along with Taurus people growing up (laughs) and growing and now where I'm at in my higher self going into my north node I I don't get along with Taurus people that (laughs) way really yes it's interesting it's just interesting like I don't know (sighs) I'm learning. I'm still learning astrology, but I'm just learning like past life energy mm. and stuff like that. It's like they, they might have been in my life in a past life, and I got and me saying like we don't get along as well. I feel like our contract ended. And that's, let me not say mm. we don't get along. We don't resonate with each other anymore. I like that perspective. Our contract <laughs> ended, and we don't resonate anymore. I love that. Damn. Yeah, cause that's how I feel about. So I'm like, I could feel like I know this person was in my life in the past. Like, we've been through. Like, when you go through so much with people in your life, I'm like, oh yeah, definitely. Or um, I know this people like if you have similar placements, definitely past life. And that's what I say, anybody in your life, you probably have some type of past life connection. Is it like a code? Like, so astrology is it like code? It is. Like your shit. So. What do you know about astrology? I don't know shit. All I know is I know my my son is Scorpio. My moon, I think I got a Virgo moon. Really? That's so interesting that you're doing a podcast because Virgo is Mercury, ruled by Mercury. So you're yes, that makes sense. And I think Gemini, the last one is Gemini. Gemini rising. Yeah. That's yeah. That's interesting. So your first house is Gemini. Scorpio is so you know like you're rising they say you're rising is who you're becoming or how people see you okay your moon is your emotions so for you to say you're a writer you're a Virgo moon that's Mercury that you write out that's beautiful 
Did you know your other play was your athlete? I know I got fucked. Some uh, is it Mars and Capricorn? Don't hold me to that. So your Mars is your passion. So like, and it's in Capricorn, you you know how to get your coins. But damn. Okay. So wait, this is too much. This is too much. For my high brain right now. So it is a lot. Astrology, like it's like a that's a rabbit hole because it's so much. You have like your traditional chart. You got your draconic chart. It's so much. I keep. I just keep getting. I'm getting like a, a image in my head. I mean, not overthinking because they're trying to show me. So all these Mars and, and nose and shit is just like <laughs> like DNA sequences. Damn. <laughs> I'm overthinking this. It's like little DNA sequences that like make up who we are in this experience. So when like, for example, the moon is in blah, 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 I get an image of like something shifting and then like mm-hmm. a, um, a new scene or like a vibration happens with changes. The, thing. Yeah, the moon phase is bringing changes when you think about it. Right now it's a new moon. So new moon fresh start and it's the first and it's the eclipse it's a lot Yo, of stuff. i got tricked early on in my spiritual journey when i was in not wouldn't say tricks i didn't know um but when i first because i had my awakening in uh college and then i was only i thought that you could only manifest during full and new moons not knowing you fucking manifesting every second so i'm no, like sir. I gotta wait for the next couple of weeks just to manifest again. And I would do that. I'll go into the moon, I'll write my shit. If I'm trying to release some shit, mm-hmm. I ain't know. No. Um, you know, Thursday, Thursday is Jupiter Day. So that's a good day for manifestations. Damn. Jupiter Day. I need to, I'm, I'm starting to get bored of my reality. I need like to like create some like bigger things. No, seriously, it gets like that. You get it comfortable. So yeah, you gotta- I'm getting comfortable with my shit. I'm getting super comfortable. So I just had a, I just had, I just experienced a manifestation I had um, wrote down years ago. I just, just experienced that. So now after I experienced, I'm like, damn, I want more. Like I want another championship. Like I look at the shit now that I manifest, I consider it a championship. So I want more. Exactly. It's like, it's your, it's like your creation is your baby. You want to create something else. Isn't it beautiful? How you- it i wasn't supposed to have a daycare until 20 what did i say 2025 and it came like in 2020 it came that year so it's beautiful to see stuff like that like you really know how powerful you are so create people like people like how you people like my pandemic was horrible you like well i started a daycare (laughs) no seriously like this is was this was like the best thing that happened to me. And I'm sorry for the people who lost people and stuff like that. My condolences. I lost like five people in my family. I get that. However, I have healed through so much. I've started so much. Like, like you, it's your perception. Like people go through stuff and it's either you're going to either stay down or stay up. Mm. Cause I, I went through my depression and stuff during the pandemic. I went through, so much during the pandemic too however i gonna still say that was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it made me who the person i am today that's how i feel about it see i love that perspective um and that's something we all need to adopt because at a certain point you can't blame external shit you got to take accountability and i think that's where a lot of people mm, careful with that uh manifestation that's why i've seen um people fall trapped to even in their adult years like it's some people who still in their 40s 50s like for example my uh grandmother she was stuck in her shit but you in the constant Mm -hmm. loop thought and you convincing yourself through affirmations over and over again until it becomes a belief and then that belief becomes your reality but we overthink a lot of shit like we assume shit yeah we, we assume shit but that won't be the case yeah that's true that's true like that person mad at me another person was just chilling <laughs> that person might have been asleep 
that person was just having a moment today. So like, it really yeah. be like, and that's what I learned. That's something I also learned. Like, stop taking things so personal. Like, mm. it's it's not it's not that deep, y'all. It's, it's like that <laughs> that's what I'm learning. Like, it's not that deep. It's it's not. And then to add into that, you don't know what that person going through, or you don't know the root. Exactly. Root of the shit. Person could be projecting, like we said earlier. Person could be projecting, and you just happen to be the target at that point of time. Mm-hmm. That's very, very true. So that's why when stuff like that happens, you just have to take things with discernment. Mm-hmm. Yep. Have your boundaries and keep it pushing. It's you, you can apply that with a lot of shit too. Like, for example, I used to be, especially in relationships, I used to, if something pissed me off, I'm just rapid fire. I'm just letting you know right there, but it's emotions. But that ain't going nowhere because I'm not listening. I'm, huh? That's Scorpio. It's a Scorpio. I'm, I'm, I'm mm-hmm, that- letting your ass have it. But then I'm not listening. I'm just trying to let you know, yo, this how this hurt me kind of shit. But then now I just sit, I have to sit on the information and like think before mm-hmm. I say something to protect myself and you. <laughs> yeah, because words can hurt. Like words are very, like we go on that words are very, very powerful. And um I was just telling my mom like as a child like it's important to call a child beautiful and oh, yes. like, that, that you love them and stuff like that I'm like that's very that's very very important and I, I'll sit there and I'll watch people curse their two-year-old baby like just I was, crazy I was having this conversation and, with my best friend yesterday uh because yeah. we, we uh, went uh to go see Sonic and he was like we would we, we walk past uh this mama she was cussing her, her child i'm like bro like what are you doing yeah people don't understand that like that's why i work in child care because people don't understand how critical those your early childhood years i feel like that's that's literally the foundation for your whole life all true all facts so just imagine you having a foundation where you're around chaos yeah around abuse yep alcohol, yep like that, that's what you grow up to so you get conditioned to that so when, when you get in a real world when you're around chaos you think that stuff is normal you comfortable yes and a you lot of that shit. yeah you said a lot of people what a lot of people i feel like a lot of people are comfortable on the chaos now facts but if they and understand the why which, like we just discussed, your environment back in the day, because then too, like, like for example, that that um, take the same same mama cursing at the child. Did your parent used to do mm-hmm. talk to you like that? Is that the environment you used Is to, that- you know, being around? It was, for example, I was uh, I was at the beach and this kid was skating and she accidentally ran into her mama and her mama was just down talking her like it was like she did something terrible. I'm like, bro, did I would do the same shit if I was on skates. Like you, you, you ain't got balance. Yeah. Like why you? No, but that's what I'm saying. I think like, okay, why are these people waking up to not break the curse? You don't know what you don't know. You don't know if you it all. I keep saying this: if people just understood the subconscious mind, that's the one thing you need to know. Mm-hmm. Then with time, you will get it because things will start making sense when you start analyzing itself but until you understand like what we have in this conversation that's why i say the same thing as in the episodes because i need it has to hit the subconscious mind it has to with repetition so until people they study like for example guys if you listen to this read this book it's called the power of your subconscious mind by joseph murphy that's like my bible if you can just understand that what you consume and what you take in mirrors in your reality and if you take that concept of what you was exposed to and how people hijacked your mind in the past you will see why you think the way you think now now it's up to you to then repattern those thoughts and behavior yeah i agree and like you just said repetition repetition that's really the key it's structure it's all structure because like you said you write your shit down every morning and that's a, 
it's law. So you know when you're writing this down, it's law. It has to happen. Exactly. When did the belief of I know this is gonna create like just undeniable? When did that happen? So me and my astrology teacher looking at my chart. He was just like, do you know how powerful like you are when you write? And it was so interesting because I was like cleaning up. I had a manifestation book for 2018. Wow. And I manifestation book for 2018. I was going through it and I saw everything that I wrote in that book really happen. Mm. I said I want to podcast back then i said i want to have a daycare i said i want to have a podcast too i'm sorry yeah no we've been taking a break y'all we we're trying to balance our life i understand understand but i do have a podcast called cosmic connections we're on all platforms (laughs) i'll I'll, I'll plug that too in the description send that to me uh when we get off the when we get off the okay i will but um i forgot what i was (laughs) Uh shit. My bad. <laughs> what was we uh oh the power like yes. I knew how powerful you so once I saw that was happening, I'm like, you know what? Let me get back to writing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how it happened. Yes. Or even like some when I when I was going through stuff, like um, I would so if you read if you read the book in a book you will see like basically in my poems I talk myself off the ledge like yeah. you see okay and I go down and like I feel like I manifested that through my writing too because it calmed me down oh that's cool though damn yeah. so you're writing to yourself in your reality and then in return your body it, it is your body reacted to it kind of shit yeah Damn, that's cool though. When I had, I was doing so to to go along with when this programming your body to respond. When I had COVID this year, I was just on some super macho shit. Like, bro, this not finna, this not gonna work. You gotta get out of me. So I was talking to myself like, look, COVID, you gotta go. <laughs> this is my body. It's like, all right, I'm about to detox. I'm fasting. We done. You, I didn't I, have no. I was just sleepy. <laughs> shit, I wish I had your symptoms. That would have been beautiful. I was oh, sleepy. Oh, wow, well, shit. I can, I can use a bad day. You ain't saying shit. <laughs> you ain't saying I, shit. I, I, hey, that, when I had COVID, like, I had a whole spiritual awakening, man. Because I was, I, was I was in my room. I read the whole book of Psalms. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, yeah, like, sometimes I mean to read the book of Psalms. So, you know, like, that. that's the book of spells. Protection yeah. spells at that. So, it was just beautiful. Like, I was just... um reflecting about my childhood all that stuff so it was a like i said that wasn't bad for me <laughs> it's cooling i think too so it's interesting so for okay for example covid for both of us would have been this terrible life changing experience but our perspective allowed us to see it differently for, okay maybe i'm supposed to you know be looking at these book of spells and just Maybe I just need to rest. Maybe you just need to just chill. Maybe you just need to sit your ass down and just uh-huh. chill uh-huh. and then vice versa. But then, too, maybe you were supposed to rear from, okay, you know how powerful you are. Prove it. Tell your body. Right. Get out of me. Yeah. This ain't working. So every, like, every, every, every day before I got out the bed and that night, I would talk to my body and I would thank it for, I started appreciating my shit. I was like, damn, like, I'm shivering and I'm all this, these symptoms and shit. I'm like, damn, you really holding me down right now like fucking thank you bro so i just yeah, had appreciation for my body after that no that's how i feel like i started um appreciating my body like people used to be like ariel when did you get something like i love how confident you are and i'm like it took me years to get like this like i really have to start loving myself and appreciating myself because like, my body got me through a lot and that's how i have to t- tell myself like wow you are really powerful yeah and that's where i my body came when I realized that. So I understand why you were doing that. I get that. It was that moment where you said, I decided. And you changed your vibrational makeup. Yes. Everything changed. Damn. Definitely. I love how simple this shit is. I just I is. love how simple it is. Like what you talk about, it, it's not, hmm. 
Because you just got to say these things out loud and then it start yes. making sense. That's true. Damn. I love that. I just love this whole process. Yeah, shit sucks, but just look at who you are now and would you have changed? You, I mean, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have changed shit because it is all happening, I suppose, to the, 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 and you said it beautifully earlier, the contract ended and you no longer resonated. I'm never going to forget that. That was such mm -hmm. a powerful statement. So anything that ended in the past, because I, like I said, I look at life as a movie. You, 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 mm -hmm. you sign your contract of what you guys want to play before you incarnate here. And then you link up how you're supposed to link up. And it's a reason why like, ask yourself, like, why it feels like, you know, this person before or this person just feels like familiar to you. Act, like really ask yourself. Cause it's, it's not, it's never been just one person. It's always, it's always, it's always mm -hmm. multiple people in, in your life. And that's why. That's, that's very true. That's why. Yeah. And then even if, even if it's somebody who did you wrong, or it just didn't end how you would have wanted it. The contract mm -hmm. ended, you no longer resonated. They fulfill what they're part of the deal. You'll see exactly. them on the other side. Mm -hmm. and exactly. You go, you go laugh that you ever took the role serious and you go <laughs> and then like this lifetime like when stuff doesn't work out you could always you won't see why at that moment but eventually mm -hmm. you're like that makes so much sense yep so once you it's basically surrendering to everything surrendering that's Same. what it's just like this analogy you in a stream and you rowing against the current you're causing resistance. You're fucking yourself up. If you go mm -hmm. with the flow, you you will be good. You're being guided. Exactly. Have faith. If you don't have faith in yourself, have faith in something. <laughs> like you have mm. to. Have, I feel like faith definitely gets you where you need to go to. So while we're on that topic, this will be a title of the episode too. Have faith. I like that. Um, <laughs> I always ask this last question to my guests since we're mm -hmm. on the topic. What would be your message to humanity during this time? My message to humanity will, will be to just be yourself and live your life for you. Be your true self and live your life for you. Because at the end of the day, caskets do not have bump beds. Nope. It's your life. So like Mr. Manifest always says, you are the creator of your reality. So act like it. So like this. God damn. That Scorpio came out. Act like it. Like, God damn. Uh, for real. Because that's where, I mean, I, I'm talking to myself too. Like, yeah. I have this myself. Like, get it together. And sometimes you need that. You do. <laughs> you definitely. You need that uh, fire under your ass. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes when situations happen, and that's the fire you need because you was comfortable. You need a little shake up. You was too comfortable. Exactly. Time for That's you to get to that next level where you need to be. Yes. That is very true. Powerful last statements. Ariel. Yes. It's been a fucking pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. I'm proud this of myself. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Yeah, my comfort zone. Look, uh, we out here. And if, of course, if you ever want to be back on, I hope you would. This, yes we definitely definitely got to have you back on but guys yeah. as always you're the creator of your own reality everything you think feels safe shapes this shit around you have faith stand in your power and know that you just a powerful motherfucker i love yeah. you period bro fucking period <laughs> i love you keep being awesome and um yeah if you want to be on the show and want to reach out i'll provide my email below hit your boy up love you guys ariel thanks for being on Thank you.